Hello, it's Ed. Welcome to the studio. Thanks for joining me again. Um, today, I want to talk to you about how I chose a new, or rather second-hand, 35mm film camera. Because my old one, my EOS 500, which I've been using quite a lot over the last year, has started to become quite unpredictable. I think the shutter's sticking, and I think there's something wrong with the electronics, so it's not reliable enough for me to use on a day-to-day -day basis anymore. And my Yashica little rangefinder, which you've probably seen on the channel as well, uh, that is soft around the edges, only the one focal length, not very practical to use, and it's starting to let light in as well. So I really needed something new, but I don't have a lot of money to spend at the moment on camera equipment. So I thought, let's have a look on eBay, see what there is, see what I can get my hands on for, you know, 20, 30, 40 quid. And there were a few little options, but I thought, well, I'll go and have a look at my local camera store first before I invest, because at least then I can hold a camera in my hands, have a look at it, check that it is what I'm wanting. And the shop that I go to, it offers a 30 day warranty as well. So I've got that peace of mind. So I went into Manchester, went to the camera shop and said, what can you do me? as cheap as possible that's in Canon because I want to be able to use my other lenses for it. And um, the guy had a rummage around and he pulled out this, which is the EOS 620. It was body only. Um, he was offering it with a kit lens. I said, I just want the body. Uh, this is my 50 millimeter lens, which uh, I had already, uh, which I love. And I know that works really well. Uh, so he said, 25 quid. And I was like, yeah, yeah. 25 quid, that sounds absolutely fine. I'm not going to haggle. I'd seen one, a 650, I think it was, which was uh, less well spec than this and about the same year. I think the 650 was the first EF mount Canon camera. It came out in 1987 and this was from 1987 as well. I think this is a 87 or 88. So it's a vintage camera. It's about, well, it's very old, um, but it looks in really good condition. So he said 25 quid and I was like, yeah, I've seen ones on eBay sort of about that price, uh, a little bit less sometimes, but I've got the peace of mind of that 30 day warranty and I can have a look at it, have a play with it in the shop before I decide to take it, which is what I did. So I opened the back up like this. You have to press a little button and then slide it open, which is nice because my 500, you just had to slide the catch and it couldn't knock open. This has got like the safety of a little button. Uh, so then you open the back up and I had a look at the shutter which is looking really good. There's no sort of oily marks on it. My 500 has got some sort of greasy marks on it and I'm told that that might be why it's sticking. So it's really nice to see that that's clean. Uh, it looks pristine, couldn't see any problems with it and it looked like it should be light tight. There's no bangs and bashes. Then I opened the camera, switched it on and just did a couple of test shots so that I could see that the shutter did open and close and I did that at various different shutter speeds to check that I could still see daylight. I held it up to the to the window with the back open, fired off the shutter and I could see daylight everywhere from one thirtieth of a second up to one four thousandth of a second. It was pretty hard to see but I could just about see that there was some light coming through so I could tell that the shutter was firing okay and I looked at the front and checked that the mirror was okay. I tested out all the buttons and dials so I switched on the camera held down the mode button went through all the different modes AV TV P M and then checked that I could select all the apertures and all the shutter speeds without any strange jumps And of course checked that when I half pressed the shutter, the camera did focus and I checked by looking through the viewfinder that it was actually focusing correctly. And looking through the viewfinder, I could see that all the information when it was switched on that was supposed to be there was there. The batteries were clearly working. So I paid my 25 pounds. In fact, I actually paid £35 because I also invested in a roll of Kodak Gold, which I'm really looking forward to putting through the camera. But before I did that, I wanted to check that it worked in whatever mode that I was going to use. And so I devised a series of tests, 24 tests for a 24 exposure film that should give the maximum number of combinations so that I could see that the camera was working properly.
And by doing these tests, you should be able to work out if there are modes or situations where you can't use your new camera. For instance, with my old EOS 500, I can't use aperture priority mode because I know it won't stick to what it's supposed to. So what I'll do now is I'll cut to me in Fletcher Moss Gardens a few days ago with this camera and a roll of black and white film in it and going through the 24 tests. Okay, so I've come to the park to do this camera test. Why? Well, why not? It's a quite lovely morning. Uh, I like to use the natural light and got plenty of space and quiet to do things. This isn't a camera test like you would get in a camera review site where we're checking edge to edge sharpness and AF speed and all that sort of stuff. This is just to check it actually works as it should. I've based it on the 24 exposure film because that's the cheapest film you can get. Black and white 24 exposure film. So I've done the first bit of this already, checking the camera without the film in, seeing if I could find any light leaks, testing the shutter to see if it was sticking, testing the winder. Well, it hasn't got a winder this one. It's a, an automatic. Um, checking the lens mount and the counter, etc all been done so now i've loaded the film i checked that the film did load and it seems to have wound on okay now i just need to shoot the 24 test frames so my first frame it says expect this to be bad skip it well what i will do is i won't skip it on this one because this has a weird quartz back which actually records uh, the date and time on the back of the camera so what i'll do is i'll use the first frame as a test of that i will turn it on to see if it works then i'll turn it off and all the rest of the frames I will shoot without it. So frame one, we'll do it full auto. We'll turn on the back, the mode selector, and I'll just take a picture of the camera that I'm shooting myself with there. You can see the data at the bottom of the screen. There we go, that is the first frame shot. And I will then turn off the mode button. So we shouldn't have anything overlaid from there on. Okay, so the next test is aperture priority on the widest, on autofocus. So we're on autofocus, select aperture priority, and we will go for the widest aperture, which is 1.8 on this, and we will take a picture of the test subject, which I just need to get out of my bag. This is what I'm using as my main subject for all the photographs. Going to be shooting this way so the sun's over there so it should be getting good light. Saying that is two thousandth of a second. There we go. That test done. 1.8 to two thousandth second. So the next test is to go all the way to the minimum aperture, which is f22, and we will take the same shot. This time it is a tenth of a second, so I'm gonna hold it very still. So it should be sharp front to back. The next test is shutter priority slow. So shutter priority, TV on this, and we will go to 1 60th of a second because any slower than that we might get camera shake. It's f9.5. There we go. And next we go on a faster shutter speed, 1 4000th. <clears throat> that might be underexposed it was flashing to say it was too low in exposure but we will see so next we go on to manual setting but using the camera's own light meter so set manual now there is no light meter in this camera it doesn't tell you when you're on manual what it should be so i was going to test it with the camera's inbuilt light meter and then external light meter to see which works but this actually doesn't give you the option it's got no up or down on it so that's kind of quite unexpected really but this is like the first generation of uh, the EF cameras so I shouldn't be surprised really so let me get my light meter app there we go and I'm using 400 speed film so let's pick somewhere in the middle like 1 500th of a second it's saying 9.5 if you can see that there 9.5 so we'll go with that there we go 
So the next test is using flash. So the flash sync speed for this is supposed to be 200, 1 250th of a second. So we'll do that and we will go up to F22. This would probably be better done in a dark room. And to use the Canon speed light. So it should be all compatible. And we'll see how this works. So I didn't see whether that flash fired. We'll have to look back on the video and see if it fired. You can test whether the flash actually works without the camera having any filming. You can just fire the flash on the camera and we'll see if the hot shoe is working. Should probably have done that first. So the next test is program hold mode using the camera in portrait orientation because I want to check that it works when it's this way up and that it doesn't have something wrong with the, the mirror and it doesn't go up or something if we do that. So put it in P mode, we'll hold it this way up for a change. There we go. The next one was P with flash. We won't, we'll skip that one. So now full auto with timer. So I'm going to do a self time shot of myself. So the self timer, I think is under this flap here. Yeah, so I hold that down and I go to timer. When it took a shot, I was estimating the focus. So the focus might be out, but that's not what we're testing. We're just testing that that self timer works and it does take a shot with the settings that were put into it, which it appears to have done. The next one is a long exposure. So this is to check light leaks and things for when it's on a long exposure. 15th of a second, it wasn't really a very slow exposure. Then shooting into direct light. So there's some sunshine over there. We'll shoot straight into it and see how it works. This is to check for flare. Lovely, might not come out, but that's the test. Next we have a double exposure. Stay on aperture priority for this. So exposure one and exposure two. There we go, we should be back to normal there. Okay, next test is the bulb setting. There is no bulb setting on this camera. So we will not test bulb because there isn't bulb, from what I can see. There is no bulb setting. So we won't be doing that. And there is no sync lead, so we won't be testing the sync. Now we're going to check the bracketing. So we're going to shoot this at minus 1.5 and plus 1.5 using aperture priority. That took three frames. So 1.5 below normal and one over. So now I need to shoot down. Okay, that should have been okay. And now shooting upwards into the sky. Should get some nice clouds. Okay, so that was shooting straight up. So there we go, apart from the one that we can't do because we need a darker environment, that is all the tests done. So I will switch the camera off. There you go, it's passed its tests. It's a working camera, I'm very happy with it. And I'm really looking forward to putting that roll of Kodak Gold through it. Uh, but that's it for this week. If you would like to know any more about either this camera or the test that I did, things that you think I've missed out or I didn't explain properly as I went along, please do drop a comment in the comment section below. I've had to rush this out a little bit, so it's probably not the most coherent of my videos. So if there's anything I can do to explain things, please do let me know. I'd love to try and help. Uh, any comments on anything else, great to hear from you. As always, if you haven't subscribed, it really does help me out uh, if you do. Uh, my numbers are going up, but it's really hard to justify the time I put on this uh, without enough people out there watching it to make me feel like I should be doing it. It's just the way it is. Um, if you could like, share, that all helps me. Uh, but most of all, it's just been great to have you complete. Thanks so much for sticking with me. That's it for this week. Have a great week, whatever you're doing, and I'll see you next time with something completely different.